Wait a minute. How can this be part two? I don't remember creating a part one. Hey, Garage Fabbers. A little while ago, I posted a shop tour video where I basically showed you all the garbage heap that I work in every day. And a lot of the comments said, man, you should really clean that place up. You would be so much happier and you would get so much more work done. These comments really weighed heavily on me. And I realized you're not wrong. So I've decided I'm going to take another quick break from the Mighty Max to try to get this place under control. And the first order of business is the dark side of the garage that I simply cannot use because it's so packed full of stuff. I need to move my old D50 frame to the side of the house. And the thing I wanna focus on most today is my post tool holding cart. In a recent video, I showed everyone a hole in my floor that I installed to hold tools that require a stand. The problem with your typical stand is the bases or the legs take up a lot of floor space and that's something I just ain't got. So with the hole I can temporarily but securely mount a tool when I need it and when I don't I can take it out and move it up against the wall out of my way. One of the greatest things about the square hole is it resists rotation so I can use tools like my JD squared tubing bender which is a manual tool that requires a little bit of strength and the stand generally needs to be bolted to the floor so that it can't move. I can't have a massive bender permanently bolted in the middle of my garage. I just can't. So this is where the part one, part two problem comes in. I feel that the installation of the hole needs to be part one, but I already have one and I don't need another one. I will make a part one, but first I need to find someone in town that wants a hole in their garage floor. So part two naturally would be what to do with all these tool stands that can't hold themselves up because they ain't got no legs on them. So today I'm making a rolling cart that holds all these post tools. The design is simple. It's just going to be an eight foot length section of two by two square tubing with heavy duty casters spaced about two feet wide, which is honestly not enough. It's kind of scary. I'm worried the thing's gonna fall over, but I need to take up less floor space. So I don't want it to stick out away from the wall more than two feet. So let's get started on it. Here's a little mini project within a project. I've got a bunch of sheet metal just laying around the shop, taking up a whole bunch of room. But in theory, if I could get the sheet metal just to lay up against the wall, it would take up less than an inch. Several pieces of sheet metal and less than an inch of floor space sounds fantastic to me. So the idea is to make a really big version of that little latch on the tray table in front of you on an airplane. Sheet metal doesn't need a lot when it's against a wall. Basically, you just need to keep the top edge of the sheet metal from falling away from the wall. Should be stupid easy. It seems kind of ridiculous, but after using it, it's quite brilliant, and I think I might create a very finished looking latch just for this that I can sell on my website once I get it up and running. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. Most of my projects are just designed in my head, and by that I mean I don't usually make paper plans or write or draw anything down. I just imagine how I want it to be, and then I build it. The problem with that is once I start building it, I can see that there are a lot of things that need to be changed, and this project isn't any different. Two things right off the bat is the placement of the wheels. This bar in the middle is where all the tools will be stored, and I envisioned these wheel crossbars being located on the ends on both sides, and this is upside down, obviously, but if you can imagine, or maybe I'll even rotate it in the editing software, this bar was going to sit on top of the wheel crossbars. That would put the bar more than four inches above the ground, and this thing is going to be stupid top heavy as it is. When you see it, it's gonna be ridiculous. That's why I was concerned that my wheels, I was only spacing them uh, two feet apart. If I'm ever pushing this thing sideways, which I need to remember not to do if I hit a pebble or something like that, this entire rack of tools is just gonna fall over because all my tools are top heavy. They're basically like a bunch of popsicles. So it won't change things a whole lot, but I want to lower the center of gravity a little bit by putting the wheel crossbars on the top. And this crossbar is actually going to be dragging really close to the ground. I measured it. I think it's something like a half inch clearance from the ground, which means it could potentially drag when I roll it out of the garage. You can't see it, but there's a little peak right on this crack right there. So it's going to drag there. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to move the wheels in a foot to shorten the wheelbase just a little bit, just so there's not so much distance in between the front and the back wheels, and it shouldn't cause any problems with storing tools on the very ends. I'm 
going to cut out a few stand holder thingies. Maybe we'll call them receivers since I'm using trailer hitch receiver tubing. And I'm going to cut them out in a way so that they have two legs that straddle the crossbar. And in one of those legs, I'm going to drill and tap a hole for a set screw. I wanna be able to move these receivers around since not all my tools are the same size. My JD squared bender is really big and my knockoff Beverly shear isn't much bigger than the stand it sits on. So being able to move the receivers around will be really handy in getting them placed in the perfect position. Also in the receivers, I'm going to drill and tap a hole into the corner where some handmade set screws are going to hold the post tightly in place. By drilling a hole in the corner, the set screw will hold the post into the corner of the receiver, making it super stable. Whereas if you were to drill a hole through one of the flat sides of the receiver, it would hold the post tightly against one wall, but it could potentially wiggle side to side. I like to start my taps in my drill press. My drill press isn't strong enough to tap the metal, but it is strong enough to get the tap to bite perfectly straight up and down, which can be pretty challenging to do by hand. I made two pieces that will weld directly to the end and they cover up the tube just to uh, try to look a little bit nicer. Plans are changing again. I thought these were a brilliant idea, little set screws to lock these in place. And that way, if I ever needed to move them side to side, brilliant as far as that goes, but I moved the cart with the tubing roller on the rack and I almost lost it. Let me show you what the problem is. So these are sturdy left to right, forward and back. Not so much. So these set screws are gonna be really handy for positioning each of these stands because each of my tools is a different size. So these stands may not all be evenly spaced out the way they are right now. So the set screws will allow me to move them around, position them in the most efficient way possible so I can fit as many tools as possible on it. And then once they're in place and the set screws are tight, I will weld them on after all. These are the only two tools that I have in the garage right now that already have stands. My JD squared bender is at my brother's house right now and I'm trying to decide if I wanna go get it. The thing is heavy and my back feels pretty good today so why push it? But it'd be really cool to see what it looks like on the rack with the rest of the tools but I just don't really wanna deal with that right now. And it's it's been out of my way for months because he's been holding on to it and why mess that up just so that I can See what it looks like on the rack. So uh, I'm gonna have to think about that one for a little bit. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to make stands for a couple other tools that I've been kinda ignoring. The tools I'm going to mount to post today are my Harbor Freight Arbor Press, my bench grinder, which will soon be a post grinder, and my knockoff Beverly Shear. I'm gonna make each of these posts four feet tall, which is honestly way too tall, I think, but I would rather trim them down if they're super obnoxious than have to try to weld some stuff on to make them taller. So starting at four feet with all of them, and we'll see how they feel.
I have reluctantly decided to go get my bender from my brother's house. It turns out I'm going to need it in order to space all the tools on the rack properly, but it's not all bad because I get to show you his super cool garage door. When he was building his garage, in order to meet building code, he had to pour his garage foundation at the same elevation as his house foundation. Unfortunately, that meant his garage foundation was going to be almost two feet higher than the alleyway that he would be entering from. So he had to get creative to figure out how to get super low cars into his garage. I am super happy with this thing so far. As you can see, some of the tools are a little too close together while others have a little bit too much wasted space in between them, so I need to move them around a little bit. And I think if I'm smart about it, I can squeeze an eighth tool in here, which would be fantastic because I've got two other tools that I wanna put on this rack. By the way, I wanna be able to use the majority of these tools on the rack. So if I don't have to remove the tool from the rack to use it, I don't wanna. Some of them, I have no choice. The tubing bender, for example, is not gonna work properly on a stand with wheels. So that one has to go in the floor. It's heavy, it's awkward, so I'll probably put it on one of the ends. Also, bench grinder would take up a lot less room if it was sideways, so I'll probably put it on the other end. Then I'm gonna organize the other ones to fit snugly, but still be usable. And then once I get everything in the place that I want, I'm going to weld each of them on. Just lightly though, in case I wanna move it in the future, it's not too hard to cut off. This is super exciting. Every post tool that I currently own fits on the rack with room to spare. I can buy even more. My current collection is the bench grinder, my pneumatic shrinker stretcher machine that I created in another video, a knockoff Beverly Shear, the Harbor Freight Arbor Press, which from now on I'm going to call the Harbor Arbor, the Harbor Freight Tubing Roller, and the JD Squared Tubing Bender, all of which can be rolled over on the rack at once and easily transferred from the rack to the hole in the floor. And what I'm most excited about is my stripper pole. I'm so excited to finally get some pole time so that I can become as good as I know I can be. I'm kind of ashamed to say it out loud, but this is the most exciting thing to happen in this garage in a very long time. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that exciting that I can walk on both sides of the garage, but it is. Not only can I walk on both sides of the garage, but every post tool I own is stored on this side as well. And I've still got plenty of room to move around. I've still got a lot of junk to take care of. I've already started mounting some pegboard. When I get that taken care of, I'll show you. I might do a second shop tour video once I get this place exactly the way I want it. Justin from the Fabrication Series thinks that we should do a sort of garage makeover type video. Let me know if you want to see something like that. Otherwise, I'm going to get back to organizing things because I'm on a roll and the momentum is insane. I don't want to stop. By the way, for those of you that said that I needed to clean this place up, that I would be much happier. Thank you. I was not offended and you were absolutely right. I am super excited to be in the garage right now and I'm motivated to get back on the Mighty Max. So once again, thank you. I'm going to get back to it. Thank you for watching and until the next one, my friends, Keep moving forward.